Welcome back to another episode of the Mac Rumor Show. We are so close, and we'll do a full deep dive of the event and what we can expect next week. But we should touch on it a little bit because Hartley, we finally got um, we finally got the invites. And first off, I forgot to say good morning, uh, good afternoon for you. How Thank are you, you doing? Yeah, sorry. I'm doing well. Wanted, yeah, thank I you. I wanted to make sure. I We've been talking beforehand, so it's, sometimes it's tough to remember that. But uh, um, I'm glad you're doing okay. And what do you think of the event invites going out? Does that get you, you know, first off, how do you feel about the Monday event day, which has not happened in, has it ever happened? I, from the last however many years I've been doing this full time, it's been either a Tuesday. There was a random Wednesday, I believe, one time in there. Uh, I don't recall a Monday, though. They don't usually do that for iPhones. Am I mistaken? No, I think you're right. I think we have had Monday events for other things. I mean, sure, WBTC yes, yes, yes. is usually a, a Monday usually, event, but, but that's because it starts the specifically. week. Yeah, yeah. for iPhone specifically, that's new. Um, but I guess that's because this year, if I'm not wrong, there's the presidential debates on the Tuesday, and so Apple doesn't want to have can I just, you know, conflicting can stuff I just, in the news cycle. I don't understand why that has anything to do with the debate and why I, I just don't see how that could make such a big deal in terms of like the new cycle and whether those two would overlap a ton, but whatever Apple could do whatever they want and uh, it'll still not have any impact on the event uh, whatsoever. And so speaking of the event, did you gain anything? We do this every year. We might as well keep doing it. Did you gain anything new or of interest? in the it's glow time tagline and the very obvious apple intelligence slash siri color scheme that we got going on not really no i mean i think yeah. we, we all knew that apple intelligence was going to be one of the main focuses of this iphone event which is a little bit unlike usual because normally the new features that apple mainly talks about at an iphone event are new for that event um, yeah. this time round uh that is not going to be the case because Apple Intelligence was, of course, unveiled at WWDC. So we are going to get repetition of why Apple Intelligence is cool. Um, yeah. That is a, a little bit different. But I suppose it does make sense because although the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max support Apple Intelligence, the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Plus don't. So this will be the first time the entire iPhone lineup, or at least the entire 16 lineup, the entire sort of main lineup of iPhones, let's forget about the older models that they keep on sale and the iPhone SE will all support Apple intelligence. And although when we talk about the key new features for the iPhone 16 Pro, we talk about stuff like the capture button and the A18 chip and the new ultra wide camera, the actual uh, main selling point of the normal iPhone 16 models will be Apple intelligence, because there's not a whole lot else other than that capture button. The cameras are going to be the same, the design is going to be the same, the displays are going to be the same. So the main selling point is Apple intelligence. And I can see why, because a lot of existing iPhone 15 users that or do feel a little bit cheated, maybe, or are on 12 month upgrade plans, will upgrade to an iPhone 16 model almost entirely because of Apple intelligence. So it's not surprising that that is the focus of this event invite, I think. Do you think that there's also a possibility that there could be some new Apple intelligence features that Apple did not show off uh, that could be exclusive to the new iPhone 16 models? And whether or not it is actually exclusive in the sense that the hardware on older phones like the 15 uh, or any of the other you know, M1 related products are unable to actually support that feature is one thing, but like companies do do that sometimes. And so, and Apple's definitely done it in the past. So do you think that that's like another reason why they focus on Apple intelligence thinking like, oh, there's going to be some iPhone 16 specific AI features that are coming? I hope so. Um, yeah. I mean, in a sense, if I hold on to my iPhone 15 Pro, I won't be so happy if they do that. But it wouldn't surprise me if uh, they have some, say, camera features that are specific, a little bit like what we've seen from Google, um, where those AI features are specific to that device. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're going to get quite such wild features that we've seen from Google, but it wouldn't surprise me if um, to help drive sales a little bit and to help drive upgrades from those iPhone 15 Pro users that do have Apple intelligence or will do later this year, um, if those users would have more reason to upgrade uh, if there were exclusive features. What do you think about Google's add me feature real quick since you mentioned it? Do you think that's something you'd ever use or would you just scramble to find some random person to help take your group photo? 
like we've done in the past i i i like photos at their best when they are candid and natural sure. as you know um sure. so i think that uh I probably would not use that sort of feature, but it's still cool. It's more of a, to me, it's more of a showcase of what the technology can do than something that I actually personally want to do. But let's say you're out with three friends and you really wanted a photo together, but you didn't have anybody else to take the picture. What would you do? And let's say there's not a yeah, single other me, soul that point, around. To me at that point. You just point, don't take the picture? Well, I would just take the picture of them because it, a lot of what these pictures are meant to be are memories and are real and are authentic. And if if you are not actually in that picture, then you are not really capturing a memory. Um, well, boy, and I, would you like Google's reimagine feature in the Magic Editor where you can select any part of the of the uh, of the image and reimagine it to be something else? Would you like that? Would you use that, Hartley? Uh, I can't say I would. No, <laughs> I, I kind of knew the answer to that. I just wanted um, to see. I mean, they're, they're fascinating and they're very impressive. Yeah. Um, but I just don't know if they are particularly useful. I think that what what is more useful is AI editing and actually image processing, um, yeah. rather than features that change facial expressions or uh, you know swap faces around and this kind of stuff because it ruins that authenticity i really think there's a long way to go with photo editing itself um mm -hmm. because apple's little magic wand tool is terrible i would encourage any listeners that are using that tool to not use it ever oh, hold no on photo a second ever looks better with that magic wand tool oh you're talking about the the okay i know what you mean where it just automatically just kind of fluff it yeah the like photo it, it adjusts bit. the exposure yeah. it adjusts the saturation it always looks worse with it um, yeah. But I think that some room for AI-driven um, uh, post-capture editing, a little bit like what you can do in apps like um, uh, Photomator, would yeah. be really useful. Because what I would like is, uh, I would like Apple Intelligence to look at the exposure of a photo. And for me to be able to click a button that says, I don't think this exposure looked quite right, but I don't know how much to adjust it by. So you tell me what you think it should adjust by. That sort of thing is really useful to me because I'm always indecisive about, okay, I want to change the black point here, but how much? Or I want to change the tint here, but how much? And to have a suggestion about that specific attribute would be really good. And then overall, that would kind of give you what you get out of the magic wand right now. The same even goes for filters. If you just turn on one of Apple's filters, it looks very extreme. It looks very intense. Uh, and often it doesn't look very good. So you want to just have a bit of a filter, but how much? Um, you know, you've got to scale all the way to 100% there. Uh, I think that we can start with more basic tools that would actually be useful. And even other stuff, we think about uh, basic video editing, suggest how I should cut a clip down. Um, yeah. So you, just in, basic in, editing tools. In new Final Cut, you do get uh, like suggestions on how to color adjust, like color correct, basically. Um, I've done it a few times. I don't love the the things that they do to it it doesn't make it look bad i just don't love the way it looks but it does kind of do those like it shows you sliders of each you know black point highlights all that stuff saturation hue and it'll adjust those things by a numerical value and then you can kind of readjust to your liking but um i mean that is starting to become some things that apple pops up in but it's just like in the most random very niche maybe that's how they test and then they'll move it on to you know the world with the photos app or whatever but this is a good segue into ios 18.1 beta 3 which i know you don't have a ton of experience with yet because you have not used it but um we did get a new beta yesterday and it did give us two i mean it's technically like one and a half new features um but we got the new photos uh feature called cleanup and so Basically, you can scrub your finger over, like draw, brush, um, you know, circle anything in a photo, and in theory, it will remove it. Now, I should preface this by saying it's not fair to call out Apple for something that's clearly in beta. It is a beta, um, but it just did, it struggled on some things, mostly people. Uh, you can go check out our reel if you have no idea what you're talking about on Instagram or TikTok or my full video on YouTube. But uh, by the way, some people got a little jarred by the fact that 
the very first image that we removed was a picture of my son. <laughs> Even my own wife was like, excuse me. Uh, I did not add in the music, but it works really well. It was bye, bye, bye for men's sync. And it's just like, ooh, that really drives the point home when you remove a child. Uh, I just didn't even think about it and just found the first photo that had multiple people in it. And so, yeah, uh, <laughs> it it does a good job of removing the person, but then like filling in things like, was not great unless you get really specific and like detailed on how you're drawing around it and making sure you're not getting other parts of the image. Uh, then I feel like it does a better job, but it's still like my daughter had her arm around my son and it took her arm with him. Wasn't able to distinguish that that was another person may it should get better in the future. Uh, I did really well with small objects. Uh, I did parking cones and parking cones that weren't like uh, obstructing things in the background too much that were very, uh, important and detailed it did a good job but then as i went down the row with these parking cones it started to fill in like more parking cones in the background just randomly um so it, it just it's a beta it needs time but like then i compared it to google's have you ever tried google's uh magic no. editor because you can you can get that on the photos google photos app for ios and uh i mean if you're like oh i really want this cleanup feature i can't wait for the beta just go download that one because it's very good right now it does a much better job and what this does is it might struggle with the same exact areas of what it's trying to generatively fill in uh because it removed from the image but um then it gives you options to swipe and it will in theory fill in like so this one image that we did there was three people standing uh in front of a car a bunch of cars on the street and apple struggled it tries to like give you recommendations and apple tried to say like hey do you want me to remove these cars and i probably should have tried that but my main focus was i wanted to try people um and so when it removed that it like blurred out the car and that did not look good it just messed up the car in the background Google did a better job at removing the person and not messing up the car too much, but it's still messed up and it wasn't perfect. But then you can swipe and it starts to fill in or change the car in the background. And even though it might not be that actual car, it's changing like the door to make it look like it's a little bit better. And it like knows that it can, what it was and what it could fill in a little bit better than what I think Apple was doing. So it needs a little bit more time, but I hope it gets to that point. I do hope it offers other options because that is nice that you can swipe through and be like, ah, I like the way this fill looks a little better. Nobody will notice that this looks a little weird. Let's post it and move on. Um, but partly, I just don't know that you're going to be using any of these features because like you mentioned before, you go all natural. So if you can't get well, a good photo, you're just not doing it. I, I mean, I, I appreciate this feature for a few things. Um, yeah. Right now, the retouch tool um, that Apple has available, because it does have a retouch tool, it has been available for years, is only yeah. available in the Photos app for Mac. So if you have your Apple Pencil and your iPad, you cannot remove anything from a photo. Now, I'm not talking about removing entire people, because of course you can't do that without some sort of generative fill. This feature has been designed for like removing like a... I don't know, some fluff from your shirt or something like you, like a small object you want to remove from a photo just to clean it up a little. Um, the fact yeah. that that is not available on the iPad with the Apple Pencil or really even just on the iPhone um, has been disappointing for many years. So I'm really pleased that this is now going to be available across all devices. And I also think that it is a very unreliable feature on the Mac right now, um, where I don't know if you've ever used this on the Mac and experienced this, but it just sometimes does not work and you have to just quit the app and reopen it or it just does not remove um, what, you are, what you're trying to remove or it, it's strangely buggy in a variety of ways. Um, so for if you look at it less of a, as less of a advanced generative AI feature that can remove complex objects and you instead look at it as an expansion of the existing retouch tool, um, and meaning that that retouch will be far more effective, um, then actually I think this is pretty good. Because right now, when you do that, say I was removing something from my shirt, what it does, it almost blurs it. So if there's like a texture mm -hmm. to the fabric, it just makes this little blurry spot, which is terrible. But with Apple Intelligence, it should be able to handle that really well, and you should con continue to see the stitch of that material. Um, and it does. So, well, I haven't tried like shirts, but like with the parking cones, there was like a fence behind it and then a giant boat. Yeah. Um, and it did a good job of like refilling in the fence, 
and you know the concrete behind it and it did a good job but it's just like as you get more detailed uh with stuff behind it that's when it becomes a problem so like i feel like uh and maybe i'll try it after this because i just didn't get a chance to spend too much time with it after the video um trying smaller objects like the stuff on your shirt and like little fuzzes and things that you want to get rid of um that, i'm guessing it should be really good at that kind of stuff better than what you were hoping for when you use the uh yeah the retouch tool on mac and also just i also find that you have to be really specific about outlining things but with generative ai it should understand hard lines and edges and be able to pick out basic objects it's like you've got some items on your shelf behind you if i wanted to remove that in uh with apple intelligence i wonder if it would be able to do that more effectively um compared to the existing retouch not tool. yet not yet hopefully we'll get there but it's not it will try it'll actually try it just it's not gonna be good it's uh it's it just needs just needs some time again preface this by saying it is a beta uh but i like where we're going and i personally think all these ai features whatever you know there are some that are useful really useful and then there are some that i'm just never going to use more camera features i feel like would fall into that former camp of being useful rather than just being something i'll dismiss and i think a lot of people feel the same way um the other feature is uh so i say one and a half be was, was waiting okay guys this might happen every once in a while and i'll apologize in advance uh we couldn't i hear anything my, it's fine okay no it's good it's good i know you couldn't hear it <laughs> but it, because i thought it was happening and it wasn't it was just a normal plane but the air show happens every labor day weekend here and the airport in which that air show takes place is about 500 feet outside the door. So at some point you might see me physically scared because it is terrifying <laughs> how loud it is. And I'm not, and I'm like on edge at all times. So they practice on this day and I don't exactly know when that's going to happen. So if it gets loud, I apologize. Uh, on the bright side, I have a free air show that I'm going to go watch after this. So well, um, you know, anyways, it's a, it's a good opportunity to try out those camera features. Oh yeah! You know, look, can, look on the positive side of the situation, Dan. If I can remove, like, maybe we can change facial expressions from being incredibly terrified yeah, terror to, to joy. having fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Google has tried that. Didn't they replace faces in one of their features? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked really well, though. I have to hand it to them. Google's really good at this. Uh, anyways, back to what, which is one of my favorite features. Honestly, it's summarizing anything but mostly notifications and this was only i think it was only available for messages and mail at the time uh, but now with uh, 18.1 beta 3 it's now been opened up and customizable uh to all applications and so i have just been absolutely loving this because um you know i mentioned football season maybe i did or i don't know i'll shut up about it at some point but uh it is fantasy football season so why i bring this up is like i got a hundred notifications from this app telling me like everyone's been cut pick up this person here's all this news i'm not looking at all of that okay but if i literally pull it up right now it gives me a summary and it gives me one two three four five five different bullet points basically perfect like that's what i need uh, i find it hilarious on the home app uh you know whenever i open up my like home, like block it'll tell me that the door was opened uh so i just got multiple status changes to your front door it was recently locked thanks like maybe it's not useful for all apps and maybe we just turn that off and that's kind of the biggest part of this update is that it's now available for all apps but you can go into the settings and toggle on and off it's really helpful for group chats if you've got a really long group chat going on uh, obviously that was already there but i feel like it's getting better and it's now doing um like single text that has you know really long it's been doing that but it's just on multiple apps that weren't working before you do get like you know with slack and stuff like that that's what i'm basically getting at other messaging apps that were not native to apple uh it's nice to see and so um all four features like this Hartley, you've used the regular portion of this, right? You just haven't had 18.1? Yeah, that's right. How do you feel about the summarizing of notifications? Are, are you not as gushing over it as I am? Or I, I like the idea of it. Apple has sort of not really known what to do about notifications for many years. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, they introduced the notification summary feature, um, mm. which was uh, 
you could pick a few times a day when it would kind of put off your notifications until it presented it like that. Does that and still exist? I turned yeah, that off. Uh, uh, okay. I think it you does can... still exist. Um, and also, I have not thought they about that. the way that notifications have been presented several times as well. Um, so yeah. this is just an extension of that. Uh, I think it's one of those things that has got to get better at understanding what you are interacting with and what you want to interact with. Because if I never open up a notification, um, you probably, the, the device should be able to understand that I don't really want that notification because chances are, if I, if I want a notification, I will action it. If, you, if I receive a news alert and I open the article, you should be able to understand what kind of uh, news alerts I'm interested in reading. Um, yeah, but there's do way you more also... that Apple intelligence could pull from this. Sure, but do you find yourself um, ever leaving a notification because you want to remember to go back to it? Yes. Uh, so you just leave. Yeah, so then you can't. It, I don't know that it, it's fair to say that you want it to think about what you're using and what notifications are important if you know, like you said, if if I'm not interacting with that notification, then it must not be important. But you just said that you also leave things that are important to you that yeah, you need to come back. That's to. true. So how is it gonna how is it gonna well, know? And you know what? That's where AI should be all knowing, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's probably not going to be for everyone, but not everyone uses yeah. their device in that way. I mean, there's plenty of people that don't leave notifications floating around to be actioned later. I mean, I use it kind of like a to-do list. So I leave me my too. messages in there until I reply to them. And it reminds me to do so, but not everyone will do that. Um, I feel like more like people the, do the that than you think. distractions focus. You know, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's going to be okay for some of the time. It's not going to be for everyone. You know what would help this? If you could just pin notifications, like you just long press mm. and there's a little pin button and it's just like, that's going to stay until I decide that I want to unpin it. Like an easy, easy fix in my opinion. But I, I feel like more people do what we do, but I don't know for sure. So this is a great time to get a little call to action out there to all of you. Are we crazy? Or do you also leave notifications up so that you remember to go and interact with it later or like respond to a message? Let us know. All right. So let's move on to another portion because, again, we're going to dive into the event more next week and everything because uh, that's the last time we can talk about it until we actually can talk about what we see. Uh, but we do have some other news on, and I think we've touched on this a little bit before, but we are expecting M4 chips to be added into the Mac lineup. And so we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that for the rest of this episode. Just quickly, um, what are you expecting to be updated first? And when do you think this is going to happen? Okay, so it looks like we're going to get four new M4 Max this year. Although, strictly speaking, it's three. Um, because okay. when we're I mean, counting Mac four, we're counting both sizes of MacBook Pro. Um, yeah. That's cheating. So, That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, some of the way that this has been reported on. Um, so mm -hmm. we've got the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the iMac, and the Mac Mini. The most significant update to, uh, out of those is the Mac Mini because it's going to get this new design, which we've talked about before. The others are fairly routine. Um, and that represents a, a good portion of what we're expecting from the M4 lineup because uh, you will have the standard M4 chip in the entry level MacBook Pro and the iMac. You will have the, uh, and the Mac Mini. So that's three Macs with the standard M4 chip. Obviously, it's also currently in the iPad Pro. There will be two machines with the M4 Pro, which will be the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, as well as the Mac Mini. And then you will have uh, two devices with the M4 Max, which will, again, be those two uh, MacBook Pros. And in terms of when we're expecting them, I mean, I guess we're not going to get them uh, at the Glow Time events because there's already quite a lot for the Glow Time event. I know we're going to go through this in more detail next week, um, but between new AirPods, new Apple Watches, and new iPhones, there's probably not the time for um, four new Macs. Um, no, that's that makes sense to hold at a separate event in October. October usually is when Apple has a Mac event. Uh, a couple of years ago, it did not have an October Mac event, but that was the exception because for about 14 years, with the exception of one year, every single October, they have released new Macs as an October event. Um, and also there's some new iPad updates floating around, potentially a new entry-level iPad, a new iPad mini. Um, those also would make sense to unveil in October. Um, some of that stuff could come in September. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Apple is going to do a really bumper 
September event, the likes of which we've never seen. I mean, they're doing an event on a Monday. Maybe this is going to be a full, solid two and a half hours, and they're going to just push it all out there. Probably hey, not. You could probably you could be, be onto separated. something. Maybe maybe the reason why they were worried about it, you know, conflicting with the the presidential debate here in the U.S. is because this event's going to be eight hours long, and so it'll go through the runtime uh, of when the debate's going to start. Um, no, I, I think I think it's going to be phone watch and i guess airpods i i'm i don't know i did not think that that was going to happen at this event but i'm hearing it more and more and more so now i guess i just gotta well take that you, you've got to remember that the last it time does the go with those. airpods was refreshed was three years ago at a september yeah. iphone event um that is quite a long time and we're also expecting this airpods max refresh so all in all, um, considering it's an iPhone accessory and AirPods have always kind of been marketed alongside the iPhone, they were unveiled alongside the iPhone 7 after all. Um, sure. In the same way the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch is always tagged onto the iPhone because the Apple Watch is dependent on the iPhone. AirPods, yeah. while now they're not dependent on the iPhone, a lot of people see they them were. as an iPhone accessory because a lot of people maybe sure. also have a PC or don't have an iPad. The iPhone is the center of their Apple ecosystem, and therefore when they think about AirPods, they think about AirPods as an iPhone accessory. So if this event is iPhone accessories, the October event would be Mac and iPad. Um, I will say, though, other than the Mac Mini, that is not going to yeah, be a very exciting say, October event. Uh, I was just going to say, like, I could totally see it being tacked on to the end of the iPhone event just because there's nothing to talk about. But now that all these rumors about the Mac Mini... Um, yeah, with this redesign, then they could stretch that out. And also, could Apple TV be coming to that event then? I don't know. Does that... Uh, that doesn't really add much. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, we are... That, there, are still rumors of that. there are still rumors of an updated HomePod as well. Um, yeah, so that could I be I certainly think a, a new Apple TV and a new HomePod, as well as two new iPad models, as well as four new Macs, uh, would spice things up for an october event because it would just be quite a lot of volume um and as much as we complain when things are not all shiny and exciting and redesigned we also complain when things are not updated and um, we found it a bit weird that the ipad pro has the m4 chip but nothing else does so it's about time that the, these other devices do and some devices like the imac um other than the uh, refresh that gave it m3 that device was left out of m2 and it's not been given a lot of love so a refresh that adds m4 and also maybe adds USB-C peripherals, um, maybe some new color options. Suddenly, that's a little bit more exciting. Um, and I am really I interested agree. to see what M4 can do because M4 is a three nanometer chip. The M3 is not. Um, so this should be a bigger jump uh, generation to generation for Apple Silicon than we have seen before. And also the actual architecture of these chips has evolved considerably more with M4 than it has in a lot of previous generations. M2 was very much a, a tweaked version of M1, and M3 was very much a tweaked version of M2. But M4 is significantly more different to M3. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, and also, there is also the potential to lean into AI for the October event. So we're talking about exclusive AI features for the iPhone 16, what if there are exclusive AI features for the M4 MacBook Pros? What if on stage there are features exclusive to Final Cut, Final Cut Apple Intelligence features um, that are only you're available speaking, on you're M4 You're speaking my language. So yeah. suddenly this October event could potentially be a little bit more exciting. Um, we'll see. I mean, to me, it would be exciting. And honestly, like, there are so many features out there that would be really nice. Uh text-based editing i mean that's so basic so many programs have that these days you just don't have that on final cut yet there's just, just go take a look at what adobe and uh, black magic who they love hyping up uh with davinci resolve like go just take their features and make them better or i don't know implement them but yeah <laughs> i i I could see, I don't know, just thinking out loud. I could see the October event being decent with some of those things, especially if they have some exclusive Apple Intelligent features too, which would be nice. Like if there's going to be exclusive Apple Intelligent features for your iPhone at this event, why not some Mac ones? You know, there's just, they're also different. The neural engine, say in something like the, uh, the M3 Max, uh, the M4 Max, that theoretically, if they scale these chips differently, could be a lot more powerful than it is in any other device um so show us why that is useful you're now putting uh these neural engines in devices 
with the explicit purpose of running Apple Intelligence. We've had neural engines for years, but we've not had Apple Intelligence. Now things are different. That is why it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the chip in the Apple Watch Series 10, because we're not expecting the Apple Watch Series 10 to have any Apple Intelligence features, but we are expecting it to be more AI capable. So what does that mean? Um, I'm interested to see where this goes for the whole lineup now. And I think it's kind of telling to bring us full circle uh, that Apple has positioned the event around AI, even though they don't have to. Um, it's it's a kind of the new uh, the new threshold that we're crossing now, um, because we are actually seeing how this plays out with this hardware. Um, so I think. It's Do we want to touch on? Yeah. Do you want to touch on what would be the most exciting, which is this design of the Mac Mini? Basically, being an Apple TV, and is it as small as an Apple TV? Is that what the the rumors are pointing at? That's why. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a bit taller than the uh, Apple TV, okay. but it will still be basically that form factor, um, significantly shrunk down. Um, and I mean, it's it's kind of difficult to get excited about the Mac Mini because it is such a mature device, um, yeah. and it has no display but it's also not pro tier so we don't think of it in the same way that we get excited about talking about stuff like the uh, mac pro there's an m4 pro chip going in it so it's pro tier yeah so it, it, pro will be, in it. it will be good for i think it will be a great device for creators and a lot of people sure. don't really need a mac studio and the mac studio is big you know do you really if you have a small desk and you're a creator want a big heavy mac studio on there um, how convenient hey. would it be if you had this little tiny thing? You could chuck it into your suitcase when you go traveling at that point. Um, it is a, it hey. is like a portable desktop. So yeah. the whole thing is a little bit more uh, interesting, but it, there, there's, it, there are limitations to how excited I can personally be about the Mac Mini. I have a Mac Mini. I have an M1 Mac Mini. Um, but... Ultimately, this is a chip refresh and a design refresh, and the design refresh is shrinking it, just shrinking it. Um, yeah. We're not adding any wild new materials or screens or anything. Way to bring down the mood. I was, <laughs> I was, I was excited about this refresh until you basically just said it's going to be a square. I mean, I know no, that, but I, I'm just like, we, I, I still I'm just think it's worth excited, excited about over something over here. This. Has, the design of the Mac Mini has been the same since Steve Jobs was CEO. It's from 2010. Um, so that is 14 years. When this device was on uh, sale in Apple stores, I believe it was it predated the iPhone 4 uh, announcement. So I'm, I think that's quite fascinating. Um, I'm glad to see that Apple is still invested in it because I, I feel like the M2 uh, Mac Mini was always a little bit half-hearted and obviously... Uh, there is no M3 Mac Mini. So it's nice to see it's still getting some love. I feel like it's almost in the position that the iMac was in a few years ago, where the design of the iMac had stuck around for so long, and it began to feel like Apple was neglecting it a little bit. Um, the Mac Mini is in a similar position, and realistically, it's overdue this update, and I suppose maybe that's why it's a bit less exciting. Can you imagine if the very first Apple Silicon Mac um, was this, or the developer kit was like this, then we yeah. would have been way more excited by it. But I think it's just because it's come at this late stage. Um, sure. What about the iMac? Are we just expecting some different colors? Nothing else changing there? I mean, we, we haven't even heard that rumored. That's just me speculating yeah. because other than that the would chip, be nice. what are you going to do? I mean, the uh the when the uh, iMac was updated to m3 they did not change any color options i was quite surprised at that they did not even change any peripherals um which i also thought was quite surprising um so do you think there's room for see. the iMac pro to finally come out again or the beefier well, i'm still expecting that we've not heard anything about that for a really I long know. time at this point. could be a little surprise. but it is still in the rumor mill it is probably yeah. still a little bit soon for that um, I think that right now we are just expecting that to be a basic uh, chip refresh, but I would not bet against uh, peripherals with USB-C and new color options. I think new color options would be really nice. Imagine if there was a a, a space black version of the M4 yeah, iMac. That'd be cool. With the M4 chip, that's going to be considerably more powerful, um, and it would kind of feel a little bit like a like a iMac Pro Mini if it had that kind that's of. That's what color the option. iMac Pro I think was, could, yeah. Apple yeah. could make people excited in the new iMac with new color options. So 
I, I always okay. advocate new color options. I know it's a bit silly, but we all do get excited about the color options. We, we either love them or we hate them. Um, yeah. As we seem to talk about endlessly, it is the consistent theme of our podcast, I think, that we always end up debating the color options. Well, it's a divisive topic. Everybody's got an opinion on a color. Everybody likes a color more than another or vice versa. Um, and then there's some people who are thinking we're absolutely insane because who cares? It's a color. Uh, I love the ones that are like, who cares? I'm going to put a case on it anyways. And it's like, all right, but like, let us have some fun here. Okay. Um, one last thing I want to touch on. The rumor is that 16 gigs of RAM could be the new minimum. Mm. I know this is another touchy topic because everyone's like eight gigs of RAM in 2024 is not enough. It's absurd. And sure, I could understand that argument. But eight gigs of RAM on a M3 MacBook Air is vastly different than eight gigs of RAM on a, you know, HP Z47635. I just made that up. I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't, you don't know, <laughs> just shook your head. You're like, I, have no I mean, it could be saying. real. I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. Well, no, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it's just in any yeah. Windows machine where the software and hardware are not necessarily co-aligned to work as well as they do with Apple Silicon. Like, Apple Silicon is and has already proved that benchmarks and performance is really good that you could get away with 8 gigs of RAM if you wanted to, depending on what you're doing, and you probably wouldn't notice any issues at all. And you could probably do a lot of the things that like you wouldn't expect to do on a uh, Windows laptop with similar specs and feel just fine with it. And so that's what makes it special. And that's what makes it good. Um, but at the same time, I do think it's time to bump up a little bit. And so I'm happy to see this report. What about you? Well, I think what's changed is what we are continually talking about in this episode, which is Apple intelligence. We know that Apple intelligence is reliant on memory predominantly. That is the limiting factor as to why it is not coming to the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 plus. Um, so it follows, therefore, that if the memory is being more extensively utilized on upcoming Macs, adding more memory would not be a bad idea. And I think there's a range of reasons um, but I think that is the main one. I think that is the main thing that will have pushed Apple to adopt more memory is the knowledge that as these devices age and as Apple intelligence becomes more demanding um, and as OS support changes, this will be a cutoff moment because of that quantity of memory. Um, so, yeah, um, I think it's good. I think there'll be no complaints about that. Again, one of those things that may make these Macs a little bit more interesting, especially if they don't come in at a higher price. If you can get an M4 MacBook Pro with the standard M4 chip, and it comes as standard with 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think that is a pretty great deal. Um, and yeah. even better, when we get to the releases next year, uh, we're looking at devices like the MacBook Air. Um, if the MacBook Air as standard comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think people are generally really going to be happy with that. And I think it's a natural evolution of where to take Apple and uh, Apple Silicon to the next level because people have always been impressed since the debut of Apple Silicon with the unified memory architecture and just how memory seems to behave differently and the re memory requirements are different because it is all integrated into that same system. Um, but yeah. to some extent, we're a little bit over that now because we're in the fourth generation of Apple right. Silicon. But, I'm but so we, we, we the make way this to take argument this about. Up is to add more memory. Right. We do make this argument. And just Apple intelligence aside, though, let's just remove that from the equation real quick. Okay. Before this, is, pretend we're in last year. We had no idea about Apple intelligence. We make the argument that eight gigs is probably not enough, but also we gush about how well these things work together and how well optimized it is. And it's all in one chip. Maybe eight gigs is fine, and I think we're just kind of, kind of scratching at you know. But I, I'm not gonna at all fault Apple for adding I, in more. It's I fine. think it is like, fine. I totally understand. I think I think objectively at this moment in time it is fine, especially on devices like uh, the iMac and the MacBook Air. I would agree it's fine. However, when you buy an expensive device like a Mac, you tend to buy that for a number of years, and you expect it to be future proofed. And at some mm -hmm. point, even if that isn't yeah. right now. Uh, eight gigabytes of memory will not be enough for all users. So at some point, Apple needs to move to adding more memory. Now, I think that is this with Apple be... Intelligence, now is the moment for that. But is this going to be 16 gigs of RAM 
what's the difference? Like 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Let's just say it's 300. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, now is this going to come at a $300 price increase or does the entry level stay the same and the 16 gigs? I think the entry level has got to stay the same, particularly it has for to. Otherwise like you're just the iMac forcing... and the MacBook Air. Otherwise you're just saying we were wrong. We needed more memory and we're forcing you to upgrade. So here's pay extra $300. Like you can't, you can't do that. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. Um, yeah, that's really, that's really all we got. Um, if you guys, I mean, that'll be it for M4 news probably until we get a few weeks yeah. out uh, after the next event, and then uh, we'll start mulling over all this stuff again. Maybe have a little bit more information about what to expect. Because uh, if we don't get things like AirPods Four at this event, that will move later. If we do get things like the iPad, uh, then that's going to be off the table for October. Um, so a lot of it will depend on what we see uh, in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, looking forward to the event. Always a good time of the year. This is my favorite time of the year. So would love to hear from everybody in the comments or hit us up on social media or email, whatever you want to do. And we'll catch everybody in the next episode.